Finding the central sulcus in imaging can be difficult. There are a few signs that can help pick up the central sulcus. Let's see what these are. The omega sign or the sigmoid hook sign. This is the most well-known identifier of the motor cortex. The location of the sigmoid hook on axial imaging demonstrates the hand motor area of the precentral gyrus. The midline sulcus sign. The longest sulcus which intersects the interhemispheric fissure is the central sulcus. The superior frontal sulcus sign or the upper T sign. The posterior end of the frontal sulcus connects to the precentral sulcus in a T shape. The central sulcus will lie posteriorly. The L sign. The L sign is where the superior frontal gyrus connects to the precentral gyrus. The lower T sign. The inferior frontal sulcus terminates in the precentral sulcus in a T junction. The M sign. The inferior frontal gyrus has an M shape and terminates in the precentral gyrus posteriorly. The U sign. The inferior end of the central sulcus is capped by U shaped gyrus, the subcentral gyrus. The pass bracket sign. The pass marginalis is the upturned end of the cingulate sulcus on the medial surface of the hemisphere. On axial imaging, the pass marginalis forms a bracket. This lies posterior to the central sulcus. The bifid post central sulcus sign. The post central sulcus lies posterior to the central sulcus and it's often bifid. The thick thin sign. The post central gyrus is thinner than the precentral gyrus. The intraparietal sulcus sign. The intraparietal sulcus intersects the postcentral sulcus. The central sulcus will lie anterior to the postcentral sulcus. The cingulate sulcus or pars marginalis. This sign is seen on midline sagittal image. The pars marginalis can be seen as the upturned end of the cingulate sulcus. The medial end of the central sulcus will lie anterior to it. 